Have you ever woken up from a dream and felt like something wasn't quite right? Or perhaps you hit sleep paralysis, a state where you can't move or speak. In these states, many people report seeing strange and frightening creatures. But what if I told you people are encountering these same creatures while they're wide awake? Sleep paralysis is a state where you're conscious, but you're unable to move or speak. Many people see frightening and strange creatures in the sleep paralysis state, like shadow creatures. A lot of people report seeing demons or an old hag. Uh, some people report seeing aliens and reptilians. All kinds of strange creatures are reported during sleep paralysis. It could be a very frightening experience, being completely unable to move, feeling an electricity or buzzing sound in your head, and feeling a presence in the room or seeing strange shadowy figures in the room with you. A little known fact about sleep paralysis is that it is also the first stage of astral projection. What people see in sleep paralysis and astral projection are often the same. They describe seeing shadowy figures, aliens, and other types of, of strange creatures. But in sleep paralysis, you're unable to move and you're usually stationary. Well, in astral projection, you're free to fly or, or go wherever you want. In today's video, we're going to explore the phenomenon of people seeing the same creatures they see in sleep paralysis as they do in real life while they're awake. This begs the question, are these creatures interdimensional beings that can exist on the astral plane and in the physical world? And what is the astral plane if physical creatures can exist there? The first stories I'm going to share with you are of people's encounters in the sleep paralysis or astral state of strange goblin-like beings seen around the world. I've had a recurring visitor in my sleep paralysis episodes, a tall, dark figure cloaked in a shadowy hood. It usually stands ominously at the foot of my bed, but one terrifying night I awoke paralyzed to find it looming right beside me. Though I couldn't see his face, I felt pure malevolence emanating from it. The other presence I have encountered is similar, like a grotesque gremlin with pointy features and brownish green skin. It has a chilling habit of restricting my breathing when I'm on my back, whispering in a strange, unsettling tongue. I've even seen it lurking in the corner of my room, and once it turned, smiled directly at me sending me shivers down my spine. The most disturbing incident was feeling its slimy, snake-like tongue probing my ear, accompanying by those guttural utterances. It was a profound relief to find out that these weren't true hauntings, that sleep paralysis could explain them. Yet, I'm still haunted by the question, why do so many people encounter similar dark figures in this state? How do we all instinctively know the evil nature of these beings? It's something I try not to dwell on. I need to sleep sometimes. Sleep paralysis, and he obviously encountered fae-like creature or goblin-like creature. Here in Alaska, we have uh, creatures called Izhigaks. They're little, little people with uh, pointy ears, green skin, described exactly like this. And people who hear them talk say they speak in a strange guttural tongue. That sounds like gibberish. And he didn't describe the way it spoke in this written story, but I've heard that strange language before and I can mimic it for you guys a little bit. I know it's gonna sound funny, but I've heard them talk multiple times here in the dark where I couldn't see them, but I could hear them talking. And my friend encountered the little people, like these little goblin things with the pointy ears in the tundra. And he heard them talk too, and he described them speaking the same way. And it sounds something like this. <laughs> Kind of like gibberish and a lot of people hear this and they think oh it's a demon oh it's something but i don't think it is the next story is also a sleep paralysis story about a similar creature i woke up in the middle of the night and it wasn't the usual jolt awake this was worse my body was a damn prison locked in place sleep paralysis i knew that much but then i saw it Right next to my bed, a swirling mass of blackness pulsed in the air like some kind of messed up glitch in reality. And out of that darkness, a face emerged, pulling itself into my world. The word witch popped into my head, but that was some kid story crap. 
This thing was worse. Think withered leather stretched over bone, scraggly hair like dead weeds around a face pulled into a permanent scowl, a hooked nose, teeth like a shark's, ears that could stab you. It was straight out of the worst horror movie, only real. I snapped out of the paralysis, pure adrenaline blasting through me. I had to take a piss really bad, but the room, it felt wrong, thick with this cold dread that sat on my chest like a weight. And in the corner, half seen, a darker shape just hung in the shadows. I didn't even blink. I was too scared that the damn thing would move. Finally, after what felt like an hour, the feeling started to fade. The shadow in the corner seemed to melt away. I figured the nightmare was ending. Hell, I should have known better. Another day, I woke up in sleep paralysis again. But there was a voice, raspy, guttural, a woman's voice, but all twisted wrong. It babbled in some language that made my skin crawl. I tried to ask it who it was, what the hell it wanted, but the garbled sound kept spilling out. A wave of ice-cold fear washed over me. It wasn't just the voice, it was what was behind it, something not even close to human. I threw out every damn prayer I could remember, but it didn't stop. Was it messing with me? Trying to talk? Or was there something truly evil on the other side? And that swirling black hole, was that some kind of doorway? I don't know, and honestly, I don't want to. All I know is I've never felt a cold, gut-wrenching terror like that before or since. It messed with my head big time. With this last story, the guy actually told me the story, and he said it was a swirling ball of black like shadows, and it stuck his head out of the shadow. And it looked like a witch. He said it had the pointy nose, the pointy ears, the pointy chin, and sharp teeth. But another feature that I forgot to put in the story was how black it looked. It looked like a shadow, but he said it looked like a witch, kind of like the Wicked Witch of the West. And he couldn't really tell how tall it was because its head stuck out of that swirling ball of like blackness. And then I told him about sleep paralysis and astral projection and little people. And I told him that's what the little people look like. They have those same features. Here's another story about sleep paralysis and an encounter with a similar creature. About seven years ago, during the time I was in college, I was around 20 years old, highly stressed being a biology major. I had fallen asleep with my office chair facing me. My desk light was still on. I woke up during the sleep paralysis, unable to move my body. And what I saw sitting in my office chair was the most vivid, detailed, and scary creature I've ever seen in my life. I still remember it to this day. The light was still shining on the background. The creature was about three to four feet tall. It looked like an emaciated old woman. Fragile gray, pale skin, and very thin skin. The nose was narrow and sharp and big. The eyes were very black and dark. There were no whites around the eyes, they were solid black. The hair was very brittle and thin and gray. The hands were old. Thin, bony, long fingers, and the nails were so long about one to one and a half inches in length. The nails on the foot and the hands were not trimmed, as if they haven't been cut. Her ears were pointy and sharp. It looked like an elf. She had a small pointy chin. She wore an old ragged white dress with cut out small triangular patterns. During the sleep paralysis, I stared at it for a good two minutes or so. She stared back at me. She didn't go on my chest or anything, and I didn't feel suffocated during the experience. I couldn't scream or move, and the thing never smiled or had any facial reactions. It was just blank and staring at me. What freaked me out after the sleep paralysis experience was that I searched old hag and found other people having similar experiences with the old hag. It was a crazy sleep paralysis experience. I never had this experience again, and I never placed an office chair facing me. I felt like it was an invitation to watch me. It was wicked and gives me goosebumps when I think about it. So again, with this story, they talk about that creepy, intense feeling that they fear, and then the goblin-like features of the old hag. And if you watch The Wizard of Oz, the green skin, the hooked pointy nose, the pointy ears, and the pointy chin, Sounds a lot like the old hag syndrome, what people see all over the world. The old hag is famous. 
is famous. People encounter the old hag, old hag syndrome and sleep paralysis all the time. Why does it look like a goblin? Why does it have pointy ears, a pointy chin, and a hooked nose just like the little people sightings say they have? What are the odds that it's going to look exactly like a little person and also be tiny in stature like a little person? He said it was about three to four feet tall, give or take, is guesstimating, meaning it was small with goblin-like features, but it was old and ugly. It wasn't attacking him or anything, it was just looking at him. Pretty interesting. Here's another story about a similar creature. I slept next to my wife and it was the middle of the night. Our bedroom door wasn't fully clothed and then I saw her. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream, I was so scared. She pushed the door slowly open, looked me straight in my eyes. She was tiny, maybe about four or five feet tall, with a hunchback and white old fertile hair. Her arms and hands were old, tugged in what I can only describe as a... Oh, fuck this, I'm going to rewrite it. This sucks, man. Shitty ass story. Fucking horrible. I was asleep in bed next to my wife when I woke up in the middle of the night. Our bedroom door was slightly open, and in the doorway I saw a hunched figure. I was paralyzed with fear and couldn't move or scream. The figure slowly pushed the door open further and stared right at me. It was a small woman, maybe four or five feet tall, with a hunched back and white brittle hair. Her arms and hands were long and thin, and her fingers were long and dirty. Her face looked like a witch out of a horror movie, with a gaping mouth full of pointed teeth. Her eyes were wide open, and she stared at me intently as she shuffled across the room. She didn't seem to notice my wife, who was closer to her and on the other side of the bed. The creature walked right around the bed, her eyes fixed on me. As she got closer, I could smell the foul odor, like death and old rags. Her black dress was dirty and ragged. When she was right next to me, I tried to scream with all my might, then I woke up. The scream ripped out of my mouth, and my wife jolted awake beside me. All I could shout was, THE WITCH! THE WITCH! In a moment, I realized I had been dreaming, but it felt so real. I was terrified and couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Even now, I can't sleep with the bedroom door even slightly open, no matter how hot it is. This is crazy, I thought. I'm a grown man, 30 years old, and I'm scared of a dream about a witch. I always thought that if I had a nightmare, it would be about demons, not some creepy old lady. But that night terror was the most frightening experience of my life. Again, another astral encounter with something with a hooked nose, sharp teeth, and short in stature. Multiple accounts of women, except for that one with the face that stuck out. I don't know if that was a woman or a man, but he did say when it was babbling in that weird language it sounded like a woman like a witch like what you'd expect a monster to sound like and speaking of that um encounter that he had with the uh, hearing that blah, 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 blah. i've heard them laugh before when i was in astral i heard really re really weird laughing it was like <laughs> like what you'd expect from a horror movie like something evil to do it sounded exactly like that. And I was like, what the hell? Why do they laugh exactly like the cliche evil thing? I don't know if that's their culture or if that's just how they are or if it means that they're evil. I don't I don't think it means they're evil. I think they just have a weird laugh. All right, so these creatures, these witch-like creatures, these goblin-like creatures are often experienced in sleep paralysis. But there are many stories of people encountering the same exact thing with the same exact description in real life. Here are some real life encounters of goblin-like creatures. My dad has a story he likes to tell me, a story about his younger days in Mexico. He's not a man who makes things up, so when he insists he saw a witch, I listened. He was a young man, 19 or 20, driving with three co-workers to their job site. Their route wound high into the mountains, a lonely stretch of road far from any town. Nothing unusual about that. It was their daily commute. But one morning around 9 or 10 a.m., he saw something that made his blood run cold. There, silhouetted against the sky, was a figure straight out of a fairy tale. 
the classic image of a witch, an old woman hunched and cloaked, soaring through the air on a broomstick. He gasped, <gasps> alerting his co-workers, and he swears they all saw it. He says if you looked up Bruja de Monterrey, the picture would be a dead ringer. The hook knows the wild eyes, the eerie cackle that seemed to fade on the wind. It wasn't some UFO, he insists. This was a human shape, too clear to be mistaken. She swooped over the mountains and vanished just as quickly. I wish I could talk to those old co-workers of his, get their side of the story. But he lost touch with them a long time ago when he came to the States. See, the thing is, stories of witches were common in my parents' hometown. People claimed to see them all the time, shadowy figures in the night. My dad, he's always been so practical, but this, I can see it in his eyes that he believes it wholeheartedly. I've experienced little people in astral, as I said, and I've heard that cackling laugh. The <laughs> I've heard it. I've heard it multiple times. I woke, I wake up in sleep paralysis and I hear this weird laughter down the street. I didn't see what it was, but I've heard it. And we have a lot of little people where I live. This person is seeing a hook nosed creature with a hunched back, a lady. They didn't describe the skin color, just similar goblin like features. The hook nose is a classic witch description that you see in cartoons and in movies with the green skin. But that's also the same description that many tribes and many people here in Alaska, the little people, are described the same exact way. The same exact way. Here's another real-life encounter of a similar creature. This happened to my uncle's wife. And I'll tell you it the way she told me. And to my sisters. We were from Nuevo Leon, a northern state in Mexico. Our little town sits south of Monterrey, near beautiful Cerro de Silla. Stories of witches and lechuzas haunt our streets, but my auntie's story, that one makes my blood run cold. She lived in a small house, perched in the hills, sharing a room with her sister. Their large window, thankfully barred, faced the main street. My aunt loved gazing at the stars, and one night, around 3 a.m., she decided to finally close the window. As she stood, she saw it. A bruja, a witch, soared directly past her house. Their eyes locked, glowing pits of hunger in a wrinkled greenish face. The witch's nose was a cruel hook, her mouth a thin slash across her ancient face. My aunt slammed the window shut, diving under her covers in blind terror. She prayed until exhaustion finally claimed her. She woke to a chilling breeze. Her head was dangling through the window. Screaming, she roused her sister, struggling desperately to pull herself back inside. My aunt had never known such fear, not just from the sight of the witch, but the realization of his terrible power. Those barred windows had nearly been her undoing. Her grandmother always warned that witches stole children through the night, and she'd never believed it until that moment. My aunt believes the witch sought revenge for their fleeting eye contact. Even now, she sometimes wakes with strange bruises, marks like rough hickeys on her skin. It's interesting to hear stories of something flying on a stick like what you hear in the classic witch stories. I didn't know that was a real thing. I didn't really investigate it, but I guess people are seeing it. So who knows? But the description is similar to the old hag or the little people that people see in Alaska. Here's another real life story of a similar creature. Okay, I've got to get this off my chest. I put off writing this for years, but it's been gnawing at me lately. So here we go. I grew up in this ancient house deep in the southern backwoods. It was kind of laid out in a circle, making it easy to run around in endless loops, which, being five and full of energy, I did constantly with my little sister in tow. One day, we were tearing through the house, playing chase as mom cooked dinner. As I rounded the corner into the dining room, something was there. Crouched in the corner was a small greenish creature. It wore something like a dark ragged cloak and had pointy ears and a mouth full of sharp teeth. The thing looked old like it spent years at the bottom of a pond all tattered and slimy 
It put a finger to its lips and grinned at me with a wicked, toothy smile. I stopped dead, my sister crashing into me from behind. We both started screaming bloody murder. Mom came running, but whatever it was, it had vanished. That moment haunted me for 20 years. I've searched and searched, but never found anything that matches what I saw. For a while, I started to worry that I'd made it all up, but my sister remembers it too. Remembers our genuine terror. So what the hell was it? We still talk about it sometimes, getting that same unsettled, kind of sick feeling just remembering. There was other freaky stuff in that house too. Disembodied voices, things moving, messed up dreams. But nothing beats the image of that grin in the corner. Any ideas are welcome. I'm desperate for some kind of explanation. Let me be clear. This wasn't a little man or a gnome or anything like that. It was closer to a gremlin, hairless with greenish skin. Whatever it was, it wasn't friendly, and its memory still makes my skin crawl. Pointy ears, a hooked nose, and sharp teeth again with green skin. Same thing, but people are running into it in the physical world. Here is yet another physical encounter of one of these little people. The earliest thing I remember that could maybe kind of sort of be called paranormal. Well, I was too little to understand it back then, but ever since the paranormal's been way too interested in me, let me tell you. I was three years old living with my family out in the middle of nowhere, Illinois. I actually do have solid memories going back that far. Not sure if that's common or not, but I do. Every Sunday, the sweet old couple from down the road would take me and my older siblings to church. Good for my parents, good for our souls, right? Afterwards, we'd hang out at their place, and the old man, he'd warned me not to go in their bedroom, said a little green monster lived in there. Cute way to keep an eye on me, I realize now. Of course, I'd run straight into that room, laughing like a maniac. And that's when I saw it, standing by the closet, grinning at me. Not a cute green monster. Think Oscar the Grouch going full evil. The hooked nose, matted green hair, a sinister grin with sharp teeth. I froze, the laughter dying in my throat. The old man didn't come to chase me away, and in a blink, I snapped out of it and bolted from the room. The whole thing couldn't have lasted more than 10 seconds. My theory, some entity took advantage of the situation. It saw a little kid vulnerable and ready to play, and it took the form of this monster. Twisted sense of humor, that. I was terrified, and the image stuck. Sure, I know the obvious answer is a kid's overactive imagination, but I'm telling you, it was real. Real as the faded wallpaper in that old bedroom. Real as the memory of that wicked grin. So yet another story of somebody running into a room and encountering a creature that shouldn't have been there. A little green goblin-like looking thing. Here's another strange story of a strange goblin-like creature. In my early 20s, me and my friend were hanging out in my boyfriend's basement. I'm going to use fucking AI for this. Talk my early 20s. Me and my friend were hanging out in my boyfriend's basement, talking paranormal stuff, sharing experiences. Across from us was an empty bedroom, and we both hated the vibe coming from it, that's what started the conversation. Suddenly, something bumped the back of the couch, hard enough to make me jolt forward. Then a hand touched my shoulder. I brushed it off, figuring it was just my imagination, but my friend insisted she felt it too. Whatever, right? I wasn't fully buying it. Not yet. That's when it happened. In the doorway of that dark room, I saw something so freaky, I was sure I had lost my mind. I wasn't saying a word, but then my friend starts describing the exact thing I thought I'd hallucinated. A creature hunched at the bottom of the doorway, a bit like the head goblin from that Tom Cruise movie legend, but minus the giant nose at a terrifying grin full of sharp teeth, greasy black ringlets. Then the creature sprang up, slicing diagonally across the doorway, eyes locking on mine for a split second before vanishing. A gasp escaped me. 
I was going to keep that to myself and save face, until my friend says I saw it too. She went on to describe the exact damn thing. I sat there, speechless, my heart pounding. We didn't hang around long after that. We were a blur of packing up and a mad dash up those stairs, past that doorway. Never went back down there again. Along with these stories of people seeing the old hag type thing or the goblin looking creature, or the witch looking creature in real life, there is a video circulating online showing supposedly one of these creatures. <laughs> So this is kind of a grainy video, you can't really see much detail, but it does look pretty weird and it's walking in a kind of weird way. It looks like I had a hunchback, it's wearing ugly, raggy clothes and hobbling towards them with a cane. They have the hunchback when they're really old because a lot of the descriptions of these things are talking about them looking extremely old, dirty, unkept hair, kind of nasty, and, uh, and very goblin-like. So why are people seeing the same creature in the astral plane and in the real world? Is the astral plane a physical place where people can go? Is the astral plane another dimension and we just are able to see it because the state we're in? Are they interacting with us when we're in that state because they can tell that we have some kind of awakened gift and they know we can see them and they're trying to communicate with them. A lot of these stories describe the, the feeling of terror or dread and malevolence with these creatures, even if they're not doing anything to them. I have a theory about that feeling of dread having more to do with the shamanic energy or the energy field required to open a doorway to another world when that intense electrical energy is being created in order to open that doorway, the feeling of that energy is extremely eerie and creepy. And because we're not used to feeling it, feeling that type of energy, 
it makes us uncomfortable and makes us scared but does that mean that they're evil and does something being ugly mean that it's evil or is it just ugly to us because it's not the same species as us maybe from their perspective we're hideous and they think they they're beautiful one of the reasons i have the theory that it's an energy field causing the creepy feeling and not the fact that they're evil one of my viewers once talked to me on the phone he wanted to tell me something a, a strange story he was a truck driver and he had to do a delivery to area 51. he didn't see anything paranormal he, nothing he he just drove there and dropped a load of whatever it could have been food it could have been standard supplies he said that when he went into the hangar to drop the stuff off an overwhelming sense of eeriness washed over him a, a very scary creepy eerie feeling and it made me think that top secret technology discovered what these creatures can do and it has something to do with some type of energy and that energy has something to do with shamanism and why sh magic or shamanism and why it works they are duplicating the energy in order to create new fantastic technology because they discovered what these things are at some point in history and they're dabbling in technology that uses that type of energy to create new strange technologies another thing that supports my theory about shamanism and it having to do with electrons is i did an experiment with my mom when i have an injury she can put her hands and she could feel electrical vibrations on her hands that's how she could tell when there's a disruption in the body's flow if i have an injury on my arm or something she'll feel and i won't even have to tell her where i'm hurt and she'll feel the vibrations like uh, pulsing or twirling or whatever on her hands so i wanted to see if a sheet of metal could block if if my theory was right and shamanism has something to do with the flow of electrons then an electrically conductive piece of metal or wire should block the ability so what i did was i got the sheet of metal and i put it over my injury she could feel it previously but when the metal was over it she could feel nothing this supports my theory because it shows that the shamanistic energy the magic that everyone thinks is hokey pokey is real and it has something to do with actual energy and actual electrons and electrically conductive materials can disrupt it and can block it and if this energy is a real energy and the government discovered these creatures and how they travel between worlds and that they actually exist and if they were to study these creatures if they were to prove that they're real and study them they would discover the mechanism and the science behind this magical magical energy that we think is magic and break it down and incorporate it into technology. Arthur C. Clarke's famous quote, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I listen to paranormal stories all the time and I can't help to think how primitive humanity is. Every time someone encounters something paranormal, they say it's evil. Over and over and over again, I could feel the pure malevolence on it. It was so evil, I could feel the evilness from it. Just because you don't understand what you're feeling and it scares you doesn't mean it's evil. Every time there's a shadow person in the house, everyone jumps the gun and thinks it's evil because there's a scary, creepy feeling. And what I'm saying is that it's not evil. This strange phenomenon with time distortion, with the eerie feeling that people are feeling, the silence that comes over us when we're around these things are all clues. But we're so stupid and primitive that we're just like, it's evil. We see a shadow person instead of thinking, oh, huh, I wonder why that thing is absorbing uh, electromagnetic frequencies and looking pitch black. What could cause it to absorb energy like that? Huh why does it feel so cold it's absorbing heat energy also that's an interesting clue and then why is everything going quiet i know the bugs don't give a shit if there's a predator around 
So why are all the bugs, the wind, and everything going dead silent in hundreds and hundreds of cases? Oh, it must be because it's evil. Oh, you know what? It's black because it's a demon. Oh, that thing looks different. It has a pointy nose. It has sharp teeth. It's a demon. It's a devil. Oh, that's magic. Oh, that's bullshit. And people are stupid. Everybody, no one's using common sense with this stuff. If we could break these things down and figure out what the hell's going on and fit the clues together and put two and two together and start to look at these things more rationally and analyze it logically without fear, without saying it felt scary, therefore it's evil. It looked black, therefore it was evil. Black equals evil. Its eyes were glowing red. Red means evil. I'm terrified. Okay, I get it. The unknown is scary, but the fact is, if this theme is going on over and over again with the same symptoms, the silence, the cold, the darkness, the shadows, the, the creatures with similar facial features and descriptions seen over and over again, the Oni, the image of Satan, the little people, goblins, the fae, all described with the hook nose, the pointy ears, and the same features. But oh, it's just all fairy tale globally. And then we don't even take into account all these strange stories of time distortion with UFOs, um, people interacting with uh, little people or the Fae and having years pass by. This is like quantum physics, super science. All these things are more like Star Trek than the paranormal. If the crew of Star Trek was to encounter a, a black shadowy being, they wouldn't say black equals evil and me scared. They would say, oh, it's absorbing this frequency of light and this frequency of light. It's also absorbing heat energy. But we're also dumb that we just jump to conclusions. And every time we encounter a strange being that tries to make contact with us, because it feels scary or it looks different, we freak out and we think it's a demon and we think it's evil. I've encountered these things, these shadows and the, the weird <laughs> talking to me, and it didn't scare me. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. And when that strange language came at me and I didn't freak out, I could sense the shock in the creature that I wasn't freaking out. Imagine if we were aliens, we're space traveling, and we tried to make first contact and we talked to some intelligent life form and then it just started screaming and shooting at us. They're not ready. They're not mature enough. They're not intelligent enough to think clearly, to realize that, that just because you don't understand it, just because something's mysterious and doesn't make sense to you and you don't get what's going on, doesn't make it evil. None of this, none of this stuff is evil. Maybe some of them are mean, Maybe some of them are pricks, but just, but I really don't think these things are evil. I don't think any of them are. I think, I just think they exist. Just like studying the natural world. If we study these things seriously and try to figure out what was going on, I think humanity would advance in leaps and bounds technologically. And we'd exit this primitive age of superstitions and fears of the unknown into an age of enlightenment and crazy technology. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, if you have any paranormal stories, email me at thezenohunter at AOL.com. Also, check out my merch shop if you want to support the channel. I got a lot of cool designs out there. Little people, aliens, Bigfoot, uh, werewolves, dogmen, all this stuff. And native art and some normal art pieces of goblins and stuff like that. This is Kit the Vitoak. Until next time, peace out.